Welcome back. Cancer is the leading cause of death by disease in children under the age of 15. And with September being National Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, we are sharing the story of a young local boy named Dylan David who fought a courageous fight against this disease and how his parents are keeping his memory alive. Back in 2007, five-year-old Dylan David was lean and muscular, his big blue eyes ready for the world, his nickname, Super Dylan. But that summer, Dylan began having bouts of nausea and headaches and was soon diagnosed with a malignant brain tumor. During his first brain surgery, he also suffered a stroke. And during the next few years, Dylan would suffer through rounds of chemo, radiation, antibody treatments, in and out of the hospital. But Dylan always remained determined to beat this disease, keeping a sense of humor and determination through it all. Steroids often kept him hungry and swollen. Then two brain surgeries later, it may have just been simply too much for this young, beautiful 10-year-old. In May of 2013, six years after being diagnosed, Dylan took his last breath just days before his 11th birthday. And joining us today are Dylan's parents, Jana and Eric David, and uh, such a beautiful story um, in a strange way. He was just, uh, you told me um, this story, Eric, and, and as I was reading your email, I just, I got tears in my eyes for what you guys have been through um, and still are, are dealing with. But you, Jana, have come up with a great way to give back to other parents, which I just think is fascinating by making quilts. Yeah. Tell me about this uh, organization. Well, I came up with the idea. Um, I was doing a, a, a seminar with the Landmark Forum, and um, in that seminar, I was uh, learning how to create connections with different communities. And the community of uh, bereaved families was a community that I didn't want to be a part of, mm -hmm. and I avoided it. And um, I decided to embrace it, and this idea just came to me. And we, we had a quilting group at um, my church, Brentwood Presbyterian, and um, they make quilts. And I asked them if they would make one, and they said, yes, and you can come help us. And so that's how I sort of learned how to do them. How have, uh, how receptive have other families been that are, that are like yourself, that have lost a child? They're, they're receptive. It's, mm -hmm. it's a little hard to mail these t-shirts away. You know, oh. I've had people that I've done them for in New York and Florida and, and Las Vegas, mm -hmm. and they have to put their you know, memories into a box and mail them off. And so that's hard. So basically uh, what these quilts are, uh, and, and the first one that was made, I guess you guys, it was with Dylan's t-shirts, like his favorite t-shirts. So they're either shirts or t-shirts. And then that way they're literally surrounded by love yeah. of the children. Yeah. Do you ever Thank look you. or need volunteers um, to make this larger, to make it bigger? Um, and if someone wants a quilt, is there a way to you know, get involved with your organization? Uh, yes, um, you can go to uh, the website, which is, it's www, you have to put the W's in, okay. uh, <laughs> www.surroundedbylovequilts.org. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a quilt request link there, as well as uh, you can write us and say that you would like to participate if you'd be interested in quilting. Mm -hmm. You're doing the quilts and you're writing a book. and. That's right. Tell us about the title, which is about what the experience yes. you went through, but the title is very interesting. So well. near the end, uh, Dylan grabbed my shoulders and he said, you have to tell everyone, Daddy. And I was like, tell him, I'll tell him, tell him what. You have to promise to tell them to remember just to love. And that became sort of a little catchphrase of his. Uh, it's almost like a WWJD kind of a phrase that people take it to mean almost what they want it to mean. But uh, we've had other parents say, you know, we just keep remembering that phrase. And our little girl brought us in when I was getting upset with them and getting ready for school and pointed at the chalkboard where we had, we had written it and it changed my whole attitude for the day. So I'm working on a memoir. I kept a blog during the whole six years of his treatment, uh, 175,000 words that I'm using as source material for uh, the memoir. So now, um, you know, he, he, has, he has passed and, and you're doing the quilt, you're doing the writing, a, a lot of it, a part of a healing process. Um, what are tips in, in that you guys on a daily basis keep moving forward? Is it faith? Is it each other? Is it his memory? It's a lot for me. It's, it's his memory. I mean, this whole thing I do to honor him mm. because he's amazing. Mm. And, um, you know, I, and I, I, we both, try to take care of ourselves and, you know, 
we've got a lot of support through our friends and family and our church and um, well with the quilt in the book it sounds like that you've each found a cathartic way to deal with this yeah yeah, yeah that's exactly great. and you have a GoFundMe page as well the GoFundMe page is raising funds so you can do this in other cities I know uh, didn't you just go to Nashville and take a quilt to a family yes I did yeah yeah and how was that it was amazing yeah and how did they find you um, well, they found me through um, a, f a, a relative of theirs mm -hmm. who I went to high school with. Okay. And, um, yeah. I, I can't imagine that connection and then being able to share the quilt. It's a beautiful thing. Well, thank you for sharing your story. I know it wasn't easy and, and still isn't easy, um, but you guys are doing a beautiful thing. Thank you. And so if you'd like to uh, find out more information uh, about Surrounded by Love Quilts, you can go to Jana's GoFundMe page. It's GoFundMe.com slash Surrounded by Love, or you can visit uh, the website, SurroundedByLoveQuilts.org.